Welcome to our coverage of NAB 2012. We're here with David from JVC, and David, uh, 4K is, is kind of the big thing this year, and everybody kind of has their version of it, uh, but it usually comes with kind of a high price tag. I know you guys have an option that can be a lot more affordable for the average shooter. Well, we do. In fact, we've been uh, uh, showing prototypes of this camera for the last year, and it's finally here, finally deliverable. This is the GYHM Q10 with a street price of $49.95. Now, you might say, well, what can I get for $49.95 in the 4K realm? Actually, you get quite a lot because it's really the only fully self-contained 4K camcorder on the market. You can actually shoot, output live 4K to a 4K monitor or projector, or and or record onto SDHC memory cards a full 3840 by 2160 resolution video. Now you might ask, what can I do with that? Well, uh, with a single cable and uh, a plug-in to Final Cut Pro, uh, you can. We have a we have a utility that will convert the data on the four memory cards in the camera into a single ProRes file that you can use uh, just with a single drag of uh, a, a, an icon on the uh, Apple computer. So you can now edit, shoot, edit, and display in 4K. The camera itself has a single half inch uh, imager that's 3840 by 2160 for full resolution. Uh, it processes a, an incredible amount of data considering that you can actually shoot in 60p in 4K, and uh, it processes that data and outputs it live as a 422 signal or records it uh, on individual memory cards so that you can uh, access it later on. Our coverage of NAB 2012 is brought to you by Cinebate, tools for filmmakers and photographers. Della Luce, apparel for filmmakers. Zeiss. We make it visible. Now for a camera like this, 4K is, is quite a large image. Uh, what are the optics in this camera? Can it handle 4K? Uh, the lens in this camera is very high quality 10 to 1 zoom lens. Uh, and it, it does seem like, well, that's difficult to do on a 4K camera. We see still cameras all the time that do that, but not with that zoom range. Uh, the lens in this camera is very high quality, but what we've done is we've limited the aperture so you don't close down past an f5.6. That's one thing you should know about this. A person who's just picking up this and expecting it to behave just like any other low-end camcorder, well, it's probably going to disappoint them because it doesn't work quite the same way. There are some things you have to know if you're going to shoot 4K. One, the lens. Uh, because you want to stay within the sweet spot of the lens. You go to an f11 or an f16, uh, it's going to be very soft. So by limiting to an f5.6 and then automatically kicking in with electronic shutter, you can uh, have the same effect as an iris, but you will have shutter effects. So if you're going to be out in bright sunlight and you don't want shutter effects, then the thing to do is use neutral density filters so that you can work around that. Keep your aperture between an f4 and an f5.6 for the best image quality from this camera. Likewise, in low light, small pixels always are less sensitive than large pixels. So uh, as with HD, when it first came out, the cameras required more light. This also requires more light, uh, in, especially in indoor environments. Outdoors, not so much of a problem, but indoors, you might want to consider a little extra light. Now, I also understand that there's a feature in here where you can crop in on 1080p, is that correct? Right. The camera has the ability to either record 1080p video or if you want to record full HD resolution or full 4K resolution, then later on you can uh, select uh, 1920 by 1080 portions of the image and output just that, which is pretty cool because now you can select that, what you want, output that, um, you can do that in post-production as well, which means you can pan and zoom after the fact and wind up with more flexibility than you would if you'd shot with an original uh, HD camera. You'll still have that resolution, but, but that's one capability it has. Now for monitoring, what kind of features do you have? Because 
4K isn't really supported by most of the average monitors out there. Well, we output four HDMI signals because a lot of the uh, monitors that are on the market now, these Toshibas, for example, they'll take four HDMI inputs uh, and and or DVI inputs, and you can easily convert HDMI to DVI. So that's been the standard. That may change over the next few years as more 4K products emerge, but right now the four HDMI are the, the, the way it's handled. Uh, the camera also outputs an HD output, so you can monitor uh, with a single monitor as we're doing here. Uh, this is not a... Uh, 4K monitor, but we're putting an HD signal out to this uh, smaller 7-inch monitor, and between the zoom feature that you were talking about, as well as the ability of this monitor to go pixel for pixel, we can actually go in and see a full resolution 4K pixel per pixel on this little monitor. So even with an inexpensive 7-inch uh, monitor on here, we can actually do four pixel per pixel monitoring on the 4K signal, just to make sure you've got good resolution and you know, your focus and aperture are properly set. Well, you know, it's good to see that 4K is an option on, on a lower end scale. You don't always have to look at RAW or um, or even l large sensor cameras uh, for the traditional workflow that so many people have been using for years, 4K seems to fit it pretty well in there. It does. Uh, a lot of people, it's, it's not magic that we can produce 4K. Uh, people walk around with little still cameras all the time that are 12 megapixels, think nothing of it. The trick is processing all that data 60 times a second and recording it. Processing, recording, compressing, all of that takes place within the, the circuitry the JVC's developed for this camera. And uh, for that, we're using a, a LSI we call Falcon Brit. It's designed for this kind of fast processing. And it certainly can be applied to other products, but uh, right now we put it into this handy little camcorder. Our coverage of NEB 2012 is brought to you by Kessler, innovative tools for filmmakers. Lettuce Direct. It's better with lettuce. LettuceDirect.com. Next light. Get lit. Now, David, uh, there's tons of traditional cameras out there, but I'm seeing here that you guys have crammed some features in there that some people might not expect to see in a, an actual camcorder. This is our new 600 series. It falls between our shoulder-supported 700 series and our real subcompact uh, HM100. The new GYHM600 and the GYHM650, uh, we feel, is the right size for a fully featured, full-performance camera that's handheld. Uh, starting with a very high quality Fujinon lens, 23 times zoom lens with a, uh, a wide angle range of 29 millimeters. So it gives great wide angle, but a very long lens that's suitable for documentaries, uh, ENG news gathering, and a lot of production applications. Uh, it's got autofocus and uh, optical image stabilizer, but seasoned shooters will appreciate the fact that it also has a uh, have three rings, one for focus, iris, and zoom. So it's got very conventional performance in that respect. Three neutral density filters, and the camera is high, very sensitive, F11 sensitivity. That's less than one lux in real low light situations, and um, it uses three uh, chips, full 1920 by 1080, one-third inch chips. Uh, the camera records onto two SDHC memory cards, very inexpensive, easy to find, in a variety of formats. One being the XDCAM EX format, which is MPEG-2. Another is the Apple Final Cut Pro MOV format. We pioneered that, so you can drag and drop images directly onto the timeline without even ingest. Um, but also the 650 records in the MXF format, which is uh, a, a standard that's being developed by the uh, AMWA Association, the Advanced Media Workflow Association, for file interoperability all the way from acquisition through playout and uh, file server archiving. Uh, you can put metadata onto the files using uh, a smartphone because the camera has Wi-Fi capability. So you can actually put metadata onto the files using your smartphone, either an Android or an I I iPhone, and uh, you can also monitor the image from the phone 
if you wish to do that as you're recording. You may have a director that wants to keep an eye on what's going on with a smartphone as you're shooting. Uh, the Wi-Fi capability also gives us the ability to FTP files back to a TV station. So if you're in a breaking news environment, uh, you can shoot and then immediately choose which clips you want to FTP. FTP the files back to the station. Uh, we happen to be using a little 4G hotspot here, but you could use any Wi-Fi connection to get the files back to the station. Now, in some cases, the files might seem a little large, especially if you're recording 35 megabits per second. So we've decided to put a dual codec capability in the 650. You can record one full-size HD file, and the second file can be a quarter HD file that is ideal for posting on a website or for FTP file transfer. So now with that capability, you can really get files back to a TV station quickly, and that's why we say breaking news can't wait. It's a whole new capability for this type of camera. I can imagine that having that option for multiple codecs and having the ability to upload directly from the camera makes this a great camera for anyone that is delivering footage and may not be editing directly for themselves. Well, that's right, because uh, the, the second file is the same time code as the first file, so you could give somebody a, a, a essentially a file to work with as a proxy and then uh, conform later on with the same time code to full resolution file, if that's what you want to do. It's so easy to edit now the full resolution files. The, the days of always editing in low resolution seem to be gone. Because, because now you can literally edit from the memory card in Final Cut Pro the original files because we're in their native format. You don't even have to do any conversion, so you can do it that way. So what kind of availability and pricing can we expect for this camera? The GYHM600 has a suggested list price of $46.95. It will be available in October. And the GYHM650 will be $56.95, available in December. Thanks for your time, David. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next wave of coverage.